procuring all the infrastructure, and then making sure that all those processes are built, yet in our consumer life, we can do that for free. In the same way, we're asking a very simple and basic question, which is, if in our lives, we can go online and provision email within a matter of minutes, or a small business can get online and run its entire financial system in a matter of minutes, why must the government spend billions and billions of dollars on information that may not be sensitive in nature? And we have to differentiate. So part one of the strategy is to make sure that we're simplifying the acquisition process. And as part of that, we're going to be launching apps.gov today. And what apps.gov is going to do, it's actually going to be a storefront. In the same way that you and I can go online today and buy books, or we can go online and uh, buy electronics, we want to make sure that we lower the barriers within federal agencies to be able to acquire those technologies. Second, the fiscal year 2010 budget, the president's budget, reflects cloud computing as a priority, and we're going to be launching a number of pilots within the federal government built around collaboration, built around messaging, built around uh, lightweight workflows that can be moved into the cloud, making sure that security concerns are addressed, of course. And in the 2011 budget, there's going to be direct guidance to federal agencies around moving towards cloud computing solutions. Third, there are a number of policy changes that have to be made. And there are significant issues, of course, when it comes to information security. And we're challenging the industry to also step up and address some of the security concerns that the federal government has. And these are legitimate security concerns uh, to make sure that information and data that the federal government has must be protected, must be secure. Uh, so we're going to be evaluating all these policy guidances that we have within the federal government to figure out what changes need to be made that are pragmatic, that are responsible. And we recognize that this is not going to happen overnight. And this is a journey in the coming months and years as we transition moving away from spending 19 plus billion dollars on infrastructure loan shifting that capital and investing it into solving some of the problems that we face. We're also trying to knock down these barriers, as I said, but on the architecture side, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making sure that we have a target architecture across the federal government uh, to ensure that those investments are being made. Today, one of the biggest barriers in the federal government is the process through which you have to go uh, by in terms of acquisition of cloud computing solutions. And what I want to talk about is how we're streamlining that process, how we're going to move towards central certification so that from the industry perspective, the industry doesn't have to go and get certification from every single agency and every single bureau to be able to offer some of these solutions. So centralizing some of that certification and also making sure that we're focused on the business problems rather than just the technology itself. So here's an example. I'd like to switch over to the live demo of apps.gov. Now, on this platform, what you'll be able to see is if I was in the agency, at an agency CIO level, and I wanted to acquire, let's say, a productivity application, I would literally click here and decide, let's say, on the project management side, I'm interested in a project management solution. And what you would essentially do is in the same way that in the consumer space, you're able to acquire these technologies. You'll be able to come in here and let's say you're interested in productivity applications. Uh, here's an example of salesforce.com. And being able to come in here and literally procure this uh, and actually put it in your shopping cart and provision these services. Across the board, what we want to be able to do uh, is make sure that we make it easy for the industry that has innovated and has addressed some of the security issues that the federal government faces to get onto the storefront on apps.gov and make it even easier on the federal side for CIOs that want to lead and CIOs that want to make sure that they're focused on providing solutions to be able to move forward and procure some of these solutions here. And across the board, we're also providing within the uh, platform itself a number of services that are actually available for free. If we go back to home or to the social media apps, you'll see a number of social media applications here that are available. People can come in here and add these solutions. Why should the government pay and build infrastructure that may be available for free? 
and GSA has negotiated terms of service agreements with a number of vendors, uh, and we're going to be leveraging those solutions. In these tough economic times, the federal government must buy smarter. The president has charged us to ensure that we're lowering the cost of government operations, that we're finding the innovative path, and that we're deploying solutions that are going to be greener and better for the environment itself. So if I could, if I could go back to the presentation itself, what, did this, what does this mean in the coming years? Well, part of what we're trying to do is make sure that in terms of the applications that are available today is that the industry responds to what we're doing in terms of providing these solutions. So in the coming months, you're going to be seeing a number of products that are going to be added. And through the procurement process, GSA is coordinating to make sure that these solutions are provided on apps.gov. If we think about the strategy itself, with this administration, we actually started with launching early in March the Cloud Computing Working Group with CIOs across the federal government. We also made sure that we established a program management office that would address some of the tougher issues around privacy, around security, around making sure that the proper federal procurement processes were also addressed as we migrate to the cloud computing path. We also uh, initiated a number of RFIs and RFPs because we want to make sure that we're addressing infrastructure as a service, software as a service, and platforms as a service. If we think about the, the valley and the innovation that has happened here, on the infrastructure side, a number of innovative approaches uh, from what Amazon is doing to looking at software as a service and what Salesforce is doing to platform as a service and what's happening with the open ID movement, making sure that the federal government is a beneficiary of those innovations. And as we look forward, you're going to be seeing a number of these RFPs that are going to be government-wide that are going to allow us to move in this direction more aggressively. But where we're headed now in terms of some of the policy areas is we want to make sure that we're focused on security, on the legislative changes that may need to be made, and also on the technology itself to make sure that we are embedding uh, our security concerns into these platforms. With that, what I'd like to do is actually turn over to a quick video that we're focused on um, around our vision of cloud computing. But before we start that, I want to congratulate Ames for what they've done in terms of deploying the Nebula solution. And Nebula is a solution on, uh, about cloud computing that literally allows the government to be able to leverage some of the most innovative technologies at a very lightweight footprint. So if you think about the environmental impact, what they've been able to do is in one container, they've been able to provide solutions that would normally take an entire city block to provide in terms of computing power. But also what they've been able to do is they've been able to collaborate successfully with the private sector. We recognize as we embark on this journey towards cloud computing that this is, not, this is not going to happen overnight. It's going to take a number of uh, months to years to address some of these deep-seated policy issues and technology issues. But I recognize that innovation is happening within government. Government is leading the way in this space. And also, when we talk about cloud computing, we recognize that there are going to be a set of solutions that we can implement because the information and the data is not sensitive. The information and data is not private in nature, so we can leverage a number of consumer platforms. There are other areas where the information and the data is sensitive or it's classified, and those solutions must be government-owned and operated, and NASA is leading the way in providing some of those solutions. The president, again, as I said, charged us to find some of these innovations, to find the best ideas and the best thinking across the world. And I'm proud to say that the Ames Research Center and NASA is actually leading the way in providing some of these solutions. This video here reflects the federal government's view on cloud computing and where we're headed. Computers and 